Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Jensen's. Hope that you're doing well. You see the laptop, you know what that means. Time for another This Week in Fragrance. Which honestly, to me, is a huge surprise that there's even anything we're talking about because usually, kind of like mid to late summer, it becomes a dead zone. Like nothing new gets announced really, just some really small things trickle out. But oh no, we got some big stuff. A new Versace Eros what? fragrance. Yeah, another new one. You thought we were getting just energy this year? Nah, apparently not. Also, a new Club de Nuit fragrance. Yeah, a new Off Non Supremacy, a new-ish Gentleman and Luna Rosa, and another Body All Oud from Latafa. Like I said, just a bunch got dropped on us here basically over the last couple of days. Now I'm gonna have linked in the description where you can find more information on most of the stuff I'm gonna talk to you about here today at iFragrance Official. So again, that's gonna be linked in the description. Check them out if you wanna read up a little bit more on all this stuff. And before we hop into the first fragrance, guys, here are some codes you can use to save money across multiple websites. So if you find yourself shopping at Max Aroma, The Perfume Box, Frag Flex, Beauty House, Joma Shop, any of these websites, use these codes to save yourself some money. Okay, let's do it. Let's jump into it. Now let's talk first the Luna Rosa. So this is Prada Luna Rosa Eau de Toilette 2024. My God, how many 2024 iterations of fragrances are gonna come out this year? Just make it stop. Now, to be fair, Prada does say that this is the same iteration of the uh, the previous fragrance, the previous Luna Rosa Eau de Toilette. So basically a presentation change. That's what they're they're saying here. Now they did do Luna Rosa Sport 2024, and I bought that one. I tried it out side by side with um, the other Luna Rosa Sport, the original Luna Rosa Sport, and at least between my two bottles, there were some differences, and I did a video on that. So if you're interested, you can check that out. But they are saying specifically here that the design of the perfume has changed, but the formula is the same. So there is the new Luna Rosa Eau de Toilette. The, the presentation style will change. They say the note breakdown is a top of green mint with a mid of lavender and a base of amber, which this is now, I think the uh, second time that they've changed the Luna Rosa presentation in a big way. The original note breakdown had lavender, bitter orange, mint, clary sage, ambroxan, and ambrette seed. So, not exactly the same, you know, now it's just mint, lavender, and amber, but we can probably just chalk that up to the dumbing down of note breakdowns overall. And if Prada is saying themselves that they haven't changed the formula, at least what the formula would be if you bought it today, because I'm sure it's not the exact same as when it came out in 2012 anyway, then I'm assuming it hasn't been changed in any major way. So there's the new Luna Rosa Eau de Toilette. And speaking of 2024 iterations, Gentleman 2024, or excuse me, Gentleman Original 2024. So this is Givenchy Gentleman Original 2024, which is basically a rebottling of what it says, the original gentleman, which I know can get kind of confusing and maybe even more so now because there's gentleman eau de toilette and then there's also gentleman eau de toilette, but they're totally different, which is why they now have to say gentleman original eau de toilette and gentleman eau de toilette because gentleman eau de toilette, the new iteration is what kicked off the whole gentleman line as we know it today with gentleman eau de parfum, reserve privé, all of those. But there was also the original gentleman eau de toilette. So the original gentleman eau de toilette came out in uh, 1974, had a more robust note breakdown. Once again, they have dumbed down the note breakdown. With this new iteration, they have a top of tarragon and cinnamon, a mid of patchouli and vetiver, and a base of Russian leather. Whereas in the original note breakdown, you had honey, bergamot, cinnamon, lemon, rose, patchouli, cedar, jasmine, a lot going on. So they say about this new iteration, rediscover your fragrance, gentlemen eau de toilette, original now available in reinvented packaging for an unchanged old faction. Faithful to its original DNA, the perfume is revealed in the elegant and iconic gentleman bottle, embodying the timeless elegance of a strong and powerful identity. So I am assuming that they're leaving it the same as it has been in terms of how the fragrance smells itself, but they are flipping that bad boy and popping it into the new gentleman bottle style. Of course, you know how the stuff goes. Maybe the stuff could change around a little bit as far as how it smells. I'm going to assume it's not, but because they said they're staying faithful to the DNA and I'm assuming that means they're keeping 
keeping it the same. Regardless though, um, a little confusing for some people, but there's gonna be Gentleman Eau de Toilette original in a very similar looking packaging to the other Gentleman Eau de Toilette. Let's talk about the new Eros next. This is from Versace, Eros Najim, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? So it's got this kind of ambery colored bottle. I did not have on my bingo scorecard for this year, Versace releasing two Eros fragrances, one of which is a Middle Eastern exclusive. You guys know what that means. You're gonna have to try to pick this up probably from a discounter and uh, hope that they can actually keep it in stock. Yay. Because one thing I will say when it comes to these Middle Eastern exclusive fragrances and their availability in North America is, it's hit or miss. It really is. You've got some, like, um, you know, most of the Stronger With You ones, that you can typically find without too much trouble. Stronger With You Oud, Stronger With You Amber, stuff like that, you can usually find. Sometimes it sells out, but it comes back in stock pretty quickly and the prices aren't crazy. Then you've got other stuff, like the One Luminous Night, which basically comes out, hits discounters, and if you missed it, Tough luck, you're never gonna see it again. Which can really suck, because things like the One Luminous Night are fantastic. And when you can't find them, that just drives the price up even more for people who do want it, and, and it's just, it's a mess. So I say this to tell you that neither me nor you nor anybody at this point probably knows how easy or hard this is gonna end up being to find at discounters, but if it really seems interesting to you, probably don't put it off when it does become available because I do know people who put off getting the One Luminous Night, just using that as an example because it's the most obvious one, and they were like, well, I'll just pick it up later. Later never came. All right. Let's talk about it. Eros Najim is a new fragrance for men launched in 2024 as a Middle East exclusive release. And as of right now, it is available at uh, Dubai Duty Free. So you can see it on the Dubai Duty Free website. So I guess if you're going through Dubai, you can scoop it up. I'm not, I'm right here, so yeah. Somebody in Dubai, scoop it up for me, please. Thank you, I love you. Unleash your inner allure with Versace Eros Najim Eau de Parfum, the new masculine fragrance. Najim translates to star in Arabic, hinting at a radiant olfactory experience that makes the wearer shine from within. It's really nice. It, it helps you accept who you are as a person, makes you love yourself. <laughs> we could all use that. Is that. That's what that means, right? Encompassing a symphony of refined notes, spicy cardamom, opulent oud, dry patchouli, and vetiver with the smoky elegance of incense, all engulfed in the gracious embrace of luscious caramel, while yellow Italian mandarin lends it a vibrant touch, culminating in an enigmatic and enticing fragrance that is set to celebrate one's individuality and originality. Harbored in the signature flacon of Eros in a caramel brown bottle. Color, color. It says color, not bottle. I called it an ambery color, caramel brown. That yeah, sounds better. So that is quite intriguing because uh, when you look at the note breakdown, it doesn't necessarily scream out Eros. Although to be fair, you could say Eros Energy also doesn't necessarily like get really close to what the original Eros is, so. There is that. But when you think Eros, usually you're thinking vanilla, apple, mint, maybe a little lemon, ambroxan, you know, stuff like that. And with this one, we've got cardamom, oud, uh, what they say, caramel, incense, patchouli, vetiver, and a, a little mandarin. So that, there is a touch of citrus. This is kind of following along in the footprints of, of just about every Middle Eastern exclusive fragrance. I don't know that I've seen, at least yet, a designer Middle Eastern exclusive where they're like, okay, this one is super fresh, really citrusy, <laughs> you know? It's always, uh, this is oud, this is caramel, this is heavy, this is dark, this is incense. That's the vibe, right? So it doesn't necessarily scream Eros, but at the end of the day, um, you know, you don't have to have something, I guess, that's always following the same DNA. Um, a lot of fragrance lines have moved past that, so it's not really a big deal at the end of the day. And if there's one thing I've learned about Middle Eastern exclusive fragrances on the designer side, they can slap. They can be really good. Just big time performance. They can be very sexy. They typically will have a little bit more of a, a daring side to them, but still keep it wearable. And with this one, no breakdown wise, I like that. Hit me with some caramel, cardamom, oud, incense, and a little Italian mandarin there, a little 
green mandarin orange off the top. That sounds good. Mandarin is typically not overly sweet. It has like a little bite to it. It smells a little more interesting than like a bergamot or grapefruit. And I can imagine something that's very rich, deep, sweet, which keeps it in line with what's really popular right now. You know, Scandal Absolute, The Most Wanted, Stronger With You, stuff like that. The caramel fits right in there. I would think the oud is not gonna be barnyardy or anything, probably gonna keep it more that kind of spicy, dark, woody vibe. And then a little smoke wafting through there, just giving it some extra push, really gonna help it, you know, during fall and winter, cut through the cold. I know it's a Middle Eastern exclusive, but I'm talking about how it's gonna smell here. <sighs> This could be really good. Or it could be a complete disastrous flop, but I'm leaning more toward it being good. So that's the new Eros. Keep your eyes open for it because absolutely for sure, when that hits discounters, it's gonna probably sell out like that when it first hits. I would, I would think that with it being a Versace, that it's gonna have a little more of a, a production run. So I would think that you're gonna see more of those available at discounters as compared to something like the One Luminous Night, but again, don't know until it actually happens. So there it is. Let me know what you think. Let's talk next about the uh, Afnon, and then we'll talk the Club de Nuit. So this is Afnon Supremacy Collector's Edition. I actually love the look of the bottle. Really, really cool. And Supremacy is one of the more well-known lines from Afnon. Of course, Afnon, uh, mainly a clone house is what it's known for. Supremacy Collector's Edition is a mesmerizing masculine fragrance that is a tribute to the legacy of Afnon's beloved Supremacy collection. This enticing scent merges the traditional allure of a timeless classic with an invigorating twist of white florals and amber undertones, culminating in an elegant and refreshing scent experience impeccable for your special occasion. Again, that bottle looks slick. So what's the note breakdown on this bad boy, you may ask? Well, uh, I'll read it off to you. A top of pineapple, bergamot, apple, and white florals, a mid of orange blossom, birch, and amber, and a base of oak moss, musk, and ambergris. Gee golly willikers, friends, what could that be? Now, in case you're unaware of some of the, the fragrances in the uh, Supremacy lineup, they do have a little old fragrance called Supremacy Silver, and that fragrance has a uh, pineapple, black currant, bergamot, etc. It's, it's Aventus. Okay, it's Aventus. <laughs> That's what Supremacy Silver is. So looking at the note breakdown for Collector's Edition, it screams to me Aventus once again, but I'm assuming they're not gonna do it as just Aventus, right? Because they already have Aventus. That wouldn't make a ton of sense. Unless they're doing like a Club de Nuit Intense Man limited edition where that one is Aventus, but it's like a higher quality version than just normal Club de Nuit Intense Man, because both of those are ultimately Aventus clones. I guess they could be doing that, but I would think Absolute Aventus probably would make the most sense. Also, they have like the black flex on the bottle and the black like insignia on the front of the bottle of the collector's edition, which kind of makes me think Absolute Aventus. I don't think anybody has actually smelled this yet. It's not really available or anything. It just was announced, but obviously it's something Aventus like. The question is whether it's Absolute Aventus, which is again where I'm kind of leaning, or if it's just higher quality Aventus than what they've already put out before. Regardless, we have Supremacy Collector's Edition coming out. Hey, it's me from the future. So when I shot this video, there wasn't much information about the new Armoff out there yet. There was basically just a picture, the name, and that's it. There were people talking about what they thought the fragrance was possibly going to be a clone of, but there wasn't really anything else out there as far as like notes or anything like that. And since I shot this video, more information has come out. So I wanted to give you guys the most up to date as of right this second, which means that probably like an hour or two from now, there's gonna be more information that comes out somehow. I don't know. So the new Armoff is called Armoff Club de Nuit. Lionheart. It's got a pretty cool updated presentation style, as you can see, or some people might say an updated new tacky style. This is how it goes with Club de Nuit. We know the drill at this point. So as you can see, it has a different medallion on the front, a lion type medallion and a different styling to the cap. And this one was first announced at Beauty World in Dubai, where a lot of people are at or have been at here over the past week or so. Obviously I didn't go, but that's where the information started to drop on this one. So you saw people posting it on Instagram. Instagram, you saw people posting about it on Reddit, places like that. And 
people were kind of going back and forth, like, what is this a clone of? What's it gonna smell similar to? And a few different people were saying Le Mal Le Parfum, that they had heard it was Le Mal Le Parfum. But there wasn't anything set in stone. Nobody came out definitively and was like, yeah, that's exactly what this is. Here's the note breakdown, you know, all of that stuff. So it was kind of up in the air as to what this actually is because there's no note breakdown. There's nobody saying definitively this is what it is. Just, hey, Club de Nuit Lionheart coming soon, basically. But thanks to Neeb at Aromatics, shout out to him and iFragrance Official, there's a little more info that I can share with you guys. Namely, the note breakdown, which I think does help paint a better picture of what this is probably going to be. So in the top, lavender and mint, which does tie it in to smelling like a Lamal fragrance, right? But then we get to the mid and the base, and in the mid, there's benzoin and vanilla, and in the base, honey, tonka, and tobacco. So I think you guys get where I'm coming from with that note breakdown, but if you don't, it's probably not Le Mal Le Parfum, but instead Le Mal Elixir, because that note breakdown is a one-to-one -one with Elixir. So that makes sense in a lot of ways, because if somebody just smelled this in passing and they picked up, oh yeah, it's kind of Le Mal-ish, then that could get out there, oh, Le Mal Le Parfum, I heard that's what it is. Because Elixir is not really super far removed from how Le Parfum smells, right? And also, Rayhan right now has a Lamal Elixir clone that's apparently doing very well. I'm gonna get that one really soon, don't have it yet, but I've heard good things about it. And it would make sense that uh, other companies, if they see one clone fragrance doing really well, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> Let me get some of that. So Armoff Club de Nuit Lionheart, as of right now, that is what I know. Again, shout out to Neeb at Aromatics, shout out to iFragrance Official, and I'm assuming it's gonna be hitting really, really soon. And uh, when it does, we'll be able to see just how close it is or isn't to Lamal Elixir. Back to me in the past. So let's wrap things up with the new Latafa. This one, Body All Oud, Noble Blush for women and men. And the bottle's pretty pink, so it makes me think it's gonna lean a little more feminine. But you know what they say, fragrances ain't got a gender, brother. Wear what you want. Brace yourself for the wonder coming your way. Prepare to be swept off your feet by our latest member in the famous Body All Oud collection, Noble Blush. Wrap yourself in a fluffy aura of your sweetest dreams, that sounds masculine, and indulge your senses with its ever so delicate allure. Yeah. Encompassing delicate rose, fluffy sweet meringue, and enveloping musk. Like I said, hyper masculine. I'm just playing with you, honestly, who cares, man? Wear that stuff, you smell awesome. So this one has a top of rose milk, a mid of almond and meringue, and a base of sandalwood, vanilla, and musk. Comes in a Really nice pink bottle. And I've got honestly no clue <laughs> what this would be a clone of, or even if it is a clone, because there are some fragrances that Latafa puts out from time to time that are what they call creations, basically fragrances that are kind of their own thing, their own vibe. And so it could be one of those, or it could be a clone of a fragrance. Um, I'm, I'm really not sure. Either way, it's coming out soon. So there we go, guys. A lot of stuff that, uh, yeah, came out of left field. Didn't expect any of this. Definitely not the Eros. Interesting to see Versace stepping into the uh, Middle Eastern exclusive kind of thing. It seems like that's becoming more and more prevalent, so it wouldn't surprise me if that becomes even more of a thing for designer brands next year as well. So there we go. Let me know in the comments what you're looking forward to the most. Thank you for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.